In southern Sinai, there are eight Bedouin tribes inhabiting the area. The largest and most powerful tribe are the El Muzaina. Roughly 3,000 El Muzaina live in the southern gulf between Nueva and Sharm el Sheikh. Throughout history, the Sinai has been an important trading route between Asia and Africa, and more recently, Europe. It has also been an important route for pilgrims from North Africa on their way to Mecca. Olin is a female bottlenose dolphin in her mid-twenties. Like other solitary dolphins, she seems to have appeared from nowhere. She's chosen the coast off the small fishing village of Nueva as her new home. It is thought that she first appeared in 1994 and spent several months acquainting herself with the surroundings and the Bedouin. At the outset, she would swim in wide circles around the local people, not allowing them to touch her. Gradually, she began to allow two local fishermen, Abdallah and Mohammed, to get closer. Both of these young Bedouin men would spend many hours in the water with her each day, playing games and inspiring her trust. The, the, the importance of living in a social group is become such a part of what a dolphin is that some of these ones have seemed to have, rather than being with other dolphins, they're, they're with humans instead, but it's the same principle. It has been suggested that rather than being made outcasts from their pods, Solitary dolphins are possibly orphans separated from their mothers when they were young or from their groups during storms or shark attacks. It is also a possibility today that they are the survivors of fishing trawls, capture programs, and even dolphins who have gone AWOL while on military maneuvers in the open sea. Popularized by the TV show Flipper and their continuing captivity in dolphinariums and zoos, the bottlenose dolphin is probably the most familiar of all dolphins. Dolphins vary in many shapes and sizes. Some have spots, others have stripes, some have long beaks, some have large fins, others have no fins. Dolphins feature predominantly in the myths and legends of most seafaring nations. The earliest known portrayal of dolphins is in rock carvings in Norway dating back 9,000 years ago. The ancient Greeks and Romans adopted dolphin motifs on vases, coins, mosaic floors, and featured them in sculptures, paintings, and drawings. The ancient Greeks held the dolphins in such high esteem that killing one was tantamount to killing a human. One of the things that makes them special is the fact that they have saved the lives of human beings before, people who were drowning at sea. We have very good documentation of people who are drowning and dolphins have saved them. That's very special. They can see inside the body as well as the outside of the body. And the kind of image that they get is going to be much more sophisticated than an X-ray. That may be one of the ways in which they help people. Since the mid-19th century, almost 1,000 different species of fish in the Red Sea have been documented. Through the ages, we find a lot of um, dolphins like Holly who are seeking out people and connecting up with people, and they're really trying to communicate, I think. When Holly connects up with somebody in the water, that somebody is the observed. We're always the observer, you know, but the, the, the role changes here. You become the observed. They're observing us.